Good morning. We are in Ezekiel chapter 18. 18 days of being and studying in the book of Ezekiel where God has a question. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for you are the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Again, I will be reading out of the New King James Version. And let's go straight into the word of Ezekiel 18. The word of the Lord came to me, this is Ezekiel, again, saying, what do you mean when you use this proverb concerning the land of Israel saying? He said, I got a question. And he's talking to Ezekiel. He said, the fathers have eaten sour grapes, comma, and the children's teeth are set on edge. What does that mean? He said, what do you mean by saying that? Why is that the word on the street? Why are you saying that your daddy did something that you suffering for? Why, why, why are you saying that? Why are you blaming your consequences on the sins of your father? The Lord said, as I live, says the Lord God, you shall no longer use this proverb in Israel. He said, I'm putting my foot down. You will not use that the consequences of your sins is predicated on the sins of your father. He said, so let's get this straight. I hear you talking, and I'm going to address the proverb or the lie. He said, behold, all souls are mine. He said, everybody that came from the mother's womb that was attached to an umbilical cord. Once you became, once you were born, you became mine. He said, all souls are mine. The soul of the father as well as the soul of the son is mine. So your daddy is, is a soul and your son and his son is a soul. The soul who sins shall die. So you can't blame the consequences of your father on the of, of the consequences that you are getting. If you did wrong, it's because the consequences are showing you what you did, not your dad. But if a man is just, he said, but if a man is right and does what is lawful and right, if he has not eaten on the mountains, he hasn't gone to the mountain and celebrated feasts with other gods nor lifted his eyes to idols of the house of Israel, all of these images that are not, not all these denominations. He said, if you haven't done that, nor defiled his neighbor's wife, you didn't sleep with your neighbor's wife, that means somebody's wife other than yours, nor approached a woman during her period, menstruation time impurity, if he has not oppressed anybody, but it has restored to the debt to his pledge to pay your debt. I was thinking, that's a, I'm checking myself on this thing. Has robbed no one by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry. His bread he gave to somebody else. His convenience. And covered the naked with clothing. If he has not exacted usury, in other words, you didn't charge more than what it was worth or added tax to, you know, just exaggerated foolishness. Nor taking any increase. In other words, uh, okay, I want to make sure I say that. Verse 8. And I don't want to add nothing. This looks serious. He said, He that has given forth upon usury Neither have taken any increase, anything that's not yours. You didn't go in and just take advantage of it. Verse 8. But has withdrawn his hand from iniquity. In other words, you had an opportunity to do something wrong. You said, no, I ain't doing that. And executed true judgment between man and man. When you saw something wrong between two people, you said what the word said, no matter how close they were to you. If he was walk, if he has walked in my statutes, the things that I put in order, and kept my judgment, the things that I hit the gavel and said, do this and don't do that, faithfully, 
he is just, maybe that he's honest, he shall surely live. And that's separate. That has nothing to do with if your dad was righteous, you righteous. No, I don't work like that. If your dad is wrong, then your dad will yield the penalty of death. If your dad is righteous, he said, his consequence will be life. So if you got issues going on in your life, you can't blame it on your dad. Do you give your dad the credit when there's something good going on in your life? Says the Lord, he shall live. All right, if a righteous man does those things that God just listed, if you really want to get an evaluation of how you really stand with God, can you check these things to see whether or not you are doing this in the community? Because we can't do anything wrong to God. It's what we do to each other. That's defined sin. Sin is hurting somebody else. All of sin, all of hurt somebody then. Sin hurts. That's why God says, I don't like it. You can't hurt me. You hurt your brother. All right? Now, that daddy, if he does all of these things and he's just, he said, but I want to make sure that you understand. You've been blaming what I'm getting ready to do to you on something that your dad did. He said, what I'm getting ready to deal with you, Judah, I'm dealing with you because of your own sins. If the daddy has a son, verse 10, who is a robber or a shedder of blood, who does any of these things and does none of those duties, but has eaten on the mountain, in other words, you get ready to do what your daddy did right, you don't do. And does none of the, these do. He, he does not eat on the mountain or defile his neighbor's wife. If he has oppressed the poor and needy, robbed by violence. Let me read that again. If he does none of those duties, but has eaten on the mountain, which God said don't do that, or defile his neighbor's wife. He said, I told you not to sleep with nobody else. Uh, he has oppressed the poor and needy, robbed by violence. Not restore the pledge. Now you can do all of these or one of them. Lifted his eyes to the idols or committed ab abominations. If he has exacted usury or taken increase, shall he then live? He said, now his daddy followed instructions. But he had a son that did it. He said, shall he live? The daddy live because he did right. Shall this guy live and he didn't do it as his daddy did? He said he shall not live. But that's the old covenant. It's God. The Hebrews said, whatever man sows, that's what he will reap. Whatever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Shall he then live? No. If he does any of these abominations, any of them, not, not just one of them, not just all of them, but any of them, he shall surely die. God said, I'm telling you something that is exact. I want you to trust me. I, God may not sound the way I'm reading, but he meant exactly what I'm saying. If you do any of this thing, he said, you're going to die. I ain't going to, it's not me. It comes with the package. If you do these things, you're not going to live. I don't care if your daddy did live right. If you do contrary to what your daddy did and he was right, and you being the son don't want to follow the instructions that are right, not because your daddy did it, it's just right, then you're going to die. His blood shall be upon him. His own, your own blood is going to be upon you. 14 verse, if however he gets a son, the lowdown son has a son. We're going to see God keep moving. If his son, the dad was righteous, the son was unrighteous. Now the son had a son, 
If, however, he begins a son who sees all the sins which his father has done and considers but does not do likewise, he said, I ain't going to be like my dad. Who has not eaten on the mountain, nor lifted his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel, or nor defiled his neighbor's wife, has not oppressed anyone, nor withheld a pledge, nor robbed by violence, but has given his bread to the hungry and covered the naked with clothing, who has withdrawn his hand from the poor and not received usury or increase. Let me see, did I read that he had withdrawn? Wait, wait, wait. Who has withdrawn his hand from the poor? In other words, he was trying to take advantage of people and not receive usury or increase but has executed my word, my judgment, and walked in my statutes, my word, he shall not die for the iniquity of his daddy, father, he shall surely live. So God got three, three generations right here. The first father did right, his son did not do right. Then the son that did not do right had a son, and that son did right. He said, I'm trying to explain this to you. If your daddy did right and you decided not to do right, you're going to die. But if your son picked up after, saw your ways and said, I don't want to be like my daddy and I'm going to do right, he said, he's going to live. And then he said, as for his father, okay, I read that part, 19, yet you still say, you say, why should the son not bear the guilt of the father? Why am I how could, what, 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 how could my going, why, my daddy wasn't no good. So that's the reason I ain't no good. He said, well, you can say what you want to, but you're going to die. If you, if you want to say you the reason you do what you do is because of your daddy, you're still going to die. You're going to blame it on your daddy. You just went and stole and slept with another woman when my daddy was like that. He said, no. You saw things your daddy did, but you had sense enough to change you. You got to be like your dad. You're going to die. Yet you say, why should the son not bear the guilt of the father? Because the son has done what is lawful. God said, I answer that. Because the son did what was right and has kept all my statutes and observed them, he shall surely live. I'm taking you one by one. I'm not in a hurry, and I am God, and there's a lot of people to you. The soul, he said, let me continue to tell you, you still ask that question. The soul who sins shall die. He helped me say it. The soul who sins shall die. Your daddy's not going to die for his daddy's sins, and neither are you going to be. If your daddy lived right, you ain't coming to heaven because he did, and you sin. The soul who sins shall die. The soul shall not bear the guilt of the father nor the father bear the guilt of the son. So it's everybody, each man for himself. The righteous of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wicked of the wicked shall be upon himself. So whatever you choose in this life to do, the consequence is yours. But if a wicked man turns, he said, now, let's say you are wicked, but you turn, you repent from all his sins, all his sins. But if a wicked man turns from all his low down ways which he has committed keeps all my statues and does what is lawful and right he shall surely live he shall not die. If any man turns from his wicked ways all of them not well, I'm going to still do that. Uh -uh. All of them. He said, that man shall live. If he stopped doing wrong, he shall live. He will not die. 22. None of the transgressions which he has committed shall be remembered against him because of the righteousness which he has done. He shall live. I'm not bringing up his path. A man changed. He got on the right path. I ain't bringing up Paul's path. Paul got on the right road, stayed on there, and, and here we go. 
That's how life is. Do I have any pleasure at all that the wicked should die? Do you think I love to see people die? Says the Lord God, and not that he should turn from his ways and live. He said, I'd rather that you turn than for you to die. I want you to change. I want you to stop. I know you're doing some low-down things, but I want you to stop. But when a righteous man turns away from his righteousness and commits iniquity and does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, shall he live? If a man that knows my word and understand how I want things done or my character and he stopped doing it, all the righteousness which he lived let me see. And does according to all the abominations that the wicked man does, shall he live? All the righteousness, everything that he did right, which he has done, shall not be remembered. He said, I'm just being real clear. Because of the unfaithfulness of which he is guilty, he stopped trusting me. And the sin which he has committed, because of them, he shall die. He said, I haven't changed. I'm still the same today. I don't care what people say. I still got a balancer. Why did you think that Jesus wrote those seven letters to those seven churches? Because he died and said, it's okay to go on. He said, no, I got something against you. I hear leaders saying that once God paid for all the sin, Jesus said, I got something against you. Fix this. Yet you say, you still say, the way of the Lord is not fair. <laughs> Here now, O house of Israel, church, is it not my way which is fair? Is, that, is it that I'm not fair? And your way which is, is not my way which is fair, and your way which are not fair? Is it is my way? Well, that's a question mark. O house of Israel, is not my way which is fair and your ways which are not fair? He said, is it, don't you think it's something wrong with you just saying? He said, let me say it again. When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and dies in it, it is because of the iniquity he has done that he dies. And somebody said, well, I heard a preacher say yesterday, he's a good teacher, but he, he, he just got a problem. But he, I just, oof. he said, this is the regular deal. This is not the spiritual deal. That's not true. Because Abraham died, and he said his his. His, his uh, obedience, his faith was counted to him as righteousness. God still speaks of Abraham. Life is life to God. God said, when he saw that David did that biblical chord, he said, live. And then he said, live twice. First time live and second time live eternally. We were made to live. But when we walk away from God, we'll be as Adam. We will die. He told Adam that. He said, if you don't do what I say do, you're going to surely die. Now, Adam didn't fall dead at that moment, but he died disconnected from God. Now we got to relearn God's whole meaning of purpose, life. Again, when a wicked man turns away from the wickedness which he committed and does which does what is lawful and right, he preserves himself alive. He said, if a man that's wrong changes, I'm just, it's either or. If a righteous man lives and then decides he don't want my word, he shall die. He said, but at the same time, if a wicked man changes his ways and start walking according to my word, he gonna live. Because he considers and turns away from all the transgressions which he committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. He said, I'm giving you my word on it. 
Anybody that changes and start following me can live. And that's what I want. Yet the house of Israel still say the way of the Lord is not fair. He still say I'm not fair. Oh, house of Israel, is it not my ways which are fair and your ways which are not fair? Is it the way you think? You think that you can kill and steal and rob and commit adultery and, and you think that, that you're going to live? He said, does that make sense to you? That you think you can do what you want to do and when you get the consequences of doing wrong, you think that that belongs to your daddy? Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, says the Lord God, everybody individually. He said, I'm going to give you one word, repent, and turn from all your transgressions, all of them, all of them. I don't care what preachers said. All of them. Turn from all of them. So that iniquity would not be your ruin. Cast away from you all the transgressions which you have committed. And get yourselves a new heart. And a new spirit. But well, why should you die? O house of Israel. Israel had done so many things against God's word. He said stop. He said, don't do that. For I have no pleasure in the death of one who dies, says the Lord God. Therefore, turn and live. That's chapter 18. So, sometimes people get confused about well, if Jesus died for my sins, then I'm not going to die. And I can still sin. No, you can't. He said, I never told you that. He said, I said, continue in my word. And I'm going to give you a spirit that's going to lead and guide you into all truth. But he will correct. And if you do sin, he said, go confess it. You don't, you don't get a chance to live in sin like it's, it's normal. It's not normal. There are penalties. I'm showing you how to live. I'm showing you how to, to stay with God. I'm, turn, I'm showing you how to turn away from things that hurt. That hurts. He says sin is defined, better yet, sin is defined that you're hurting somebody. And you think I get glory out of you hurting somebody? Just because you decide to sin doesn't mean that it does not hurt. Somebody will be affected by your sin. You may not ever see them. You may not ever know it. You may give your keys to uh, somebody to, to, to wash your car and your sin has semen on it or some type of thing that you did and they touch it. And all of a sudden, the person that touched your keys don't know where they came from. Sin hurts. Lies hurt. The vision of sin hurt. The actions, everything about sin is, is, is not good. So Jesus said, Please be known that, let it be known that I and my father are one. I don't know how y'all tripping. I don't know how we tripping over Jesus died for our sins. That's because he died so we don't have to do it. Not so that we can do it. I died so you don't have an excuse. I'm going to be an example of how to live. Copy me. Because you won't read the word. So just do what I do. Did you see me sing didn't follow me. I didn't die so that you can sin. I died so that you can see that you don't have to sin. I made it complete. I said it's finished. The blood that I'm giving you gives you the new nature, a new heart, a new hunger, a new desire. Not so you can be lazy and, and, and just sin when you get ready and knowing that he, but he said, hypothetically, if you do sin, because he said, you might. He said, you got an advocate. I am he with the Father. Go back to the Word, find out how to correct. Most of us don't want to correct. We want to continue in it. And Paul said, shall we continue in sin? He said, God forbid. He said, just because God has given us a chance to walk with him and he's going to correct us and be asked to us as a father, 
He said, yeah, I ain't playing for you to stay to that stuff. I still want you to stop. I still want you to hunger to do right. I still want you to say I was wrong. I still want you to turn yourself in. I still want you to say I'm sorry. And then they just get along like that. It's just like the best way to put it is if you own the company and all of your employees say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm in the company. I can do what I want to do. He said, you can't run no business like that. You cannot run a business with everybody stealing your product. Teachers can't steal all the stuff and take it home and then um, be, be held. Uh, teachers can't do that. You can't take the school stuff and then call it yours and then go home and make money off of that. You can't do it. It's not right. It's not going to be right today, tomorrow, the next day, no day. So if we are going to do what the word said do, we got to do it like he said. And when we find out we're wrong, we got to just make adjustments. That's how it is. It's easy to do. It's just our, our, our nature to want to do something different is the problem. I mean, you know, I, I can say I struggle with, and I know I struggle with disobedience. But I wasn't getting nothing but the results of a disobedient person. Hurting all the time, eating everything, and realizing that just because it, the world don't call it wrong don't mean that it wasn't sin. God was like, you got to stop that. You can't continue to keep going in the direction. You will lose the weight, gain the weight. You got to get stable. Your body can't. Your body wasn't made like that. So whatever it is that we're doing, I may say that. I may... You know, if I find myself talking too much, I have to say, look, I was wrong. I can't be talking about something that I know my spirit going to check me. And anything that I'm doing or not doing, I saw that part about um, making sure that I cover somebody that's needs a garment or I give something to somebody that's hungry. I said, Lord, help me to know when it's time for me to do that. Show me how to do it. Don't, don't I don't want to see it in the Word and then say, well, no, I want to know how to do that. I'm learning, and I want to know your expectations. And when I see an opportunity to be what you said I must be to represent you, then I don't want to shy away from something. And that's, I saw some things in here that I was like, I want to do better. I'm learning you because I want to know where my sins are. Where is it that I'm incomplete? Where is it that I'm shaking when I walk like a baby who just learned to walk? And then once I see it, and you made provision for me to do something about it, I don't want to turn my head. I want that grace. I want to live one day at a time and to know when to make a move and when not to make a move. I don't want any sins. I don't like none of them. I don't like sin done to me. I don't like people doing me wrong, and I don't want to do anybody wrong. That is Ezekiel 18.